Hello everyone, my name is Luis Diaz da Silva from the University of Sao Paulo and this is the third video on a very simple model to illustrate the Bogliubov de Gen formalism and, and see how does it compare with the extension spectrum from the usual many body language. So let's just recap what it did so far. So we start with a very, very simple model. I keep getting these funny dots here. Let's see if we can, uh, which is this one. Just two fermionic operators with a you know, simple superconducting pairing here. So this is all single particle. And we wrote the mini body form you know, in, in terms of number occupation, the basis of you know, number occupation. 0, 0, 1, 0, so on. Uh, and we also wrote you know, the same Hamiltonian in the Bogolubov de Gen form, which is this one, right? And then the last video, we're discussing how the two compare in terms of the spectrum. We first, we diagonalize this Hamiltonian, and we mentioned that this is block diagonal in terms of the parity operator. So if you take minus one and take it to the power of the number of fermions on, on each state, if you have either zero or two fermions, they all fall into the same parity block plus one. And if you have only one, either on state one or on state two, then you, you are in the minus one block. So the block, the Hamiltonian is block diagonal in this basis, in this, in this base, all right? So where each state has a well-defined parity in terms of that definition. And we chose numbers like epsilon one equals one, epsilon two is three as a function of a parameter alpha that we called here. And it plug delta to be real equals to two. And just, you know, from this, we got the, the excitation spectrum. That's what we wrote here, right? Where we diagonalize this Hamiltonian and subtract the energy of the, the ground state so that the ground state has energy zero. So that's the ground state. So everything above the ground state are excitation. This is my, my excitation spectrum. And because the Hamiltonian is block diagonal, we can look at the parity of each of the excitations, right? We, the actual number is not a well conserved, is not conserved, but we know at least which parity the excitation is, is the excitation has. And why is that? Is well, the excitations in this case are Bogolubov quasi-particles, which are combinations of electrons and holes. So we, you, you, you cannot talk about indiv individual electrons anymore. You have to talk in, in terms of these excitations, which involve essentially pairs of electrons. So that's what we, even though you, you still have these uh, parity equals minus one excitations, you notice that the ground state, for instance, has parity equals plus one, right? So the first excitation has this energy, one point. A to eight, that one particle. Why do I know it's one particle? Because the parity is minus one. Here, the second excitation has 3.828, is also one particle. Why? The par parity is minus one. Now, the, the last and most uh, uh, energetic excitation is a two particle excitation, which is 5.626 with a parity of plus one. And notice that five, uh, six, five, six is just the sum of these two, right? So this, I know then what I'm doing here is when I am at this state, I'm fully occupying my, my Hilbert space. So I have two excitations, two quasi-particle, if, if you wish. All right. So this is all for all equals zero, right? And we did the same for the Bogolubov de Gen Hamiltonian. This is a single particle. This is important. So this is one particle. So if we want to diagonalize this thing, we have the single particle states. Actually, we have double the single particle states because we 
artificially doubled our our representation, if you wish, by adding these extra degrees of freedom with these negative energies here. So we have these electrons and holes, right? And even though we treat them as if they were independent, they are not. So in practice, what we have is we have to consider that when, when you, we look for, for the excitations. But if we take alpha equals zero and we diagonalize this matrix, note, re, always remember this one half here, right? This is important. Otherwise, you get your numbers wrong. So you, you get a symmetric spectrum around zero. That's always the case for a Bogley above the Gen Hamiltonians. It's always a symmetric uh, spectrum. You have the same number of levels above zero as the same number as the number of states below zero. And that's by construction, right? That's how we construct the Hamiltonian in the first place. So it's, that's natural that this occurs. So how do we do the excitations here then? Well, as I mentioned, you have to do it in pairs. You have to occupy two of these states, one with so-called positive energy and one with negative energy, and see what you get. Here, you, and you can only occupy uh, these once, right? So you, 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 have to, you have to, say, create a pair here. Yeah, well, sometimes creating a pair, but uh, maybe this is the excitation, right? And you have to add the positive energy with the absolute value of this negative energy here in order to compare that with the first excitation of one particle in my excitation spectrum. So if I add 0.914 with 0.914, I get 1.8228. The other excitation is I put, I have a particle here. Of course, I'll have the other half, if you want, here. There's 1.914 plus 1.914, I'll have three, a to eight. And if I have both excitations, that's all I, I can do here, right? I can I have this pair and this pair. At the same time, I have all levels occupied. I have to add everything. Remember that I have to add the absolute value of these guys. I have the two quasi particle uh, excitation that I have here. So that's how I translate the, the quasi particle spectrum. spectrum into my excitation spectrum. Now, what about those crossings that we we were discussing, right? Remember the the sign, the the, the site and topology topology and condensed matter uh, the lectures that we were discussing this paragraph. Now parallel levels cross the zero energy. Right, this is the Bogolyubov spectrum. The excitation energy of the Bogolyubov causal particle changes signs, and then we have a parity switch. What does that mean? Well, we did we did precisely that by adding this parameter alpha here into the Hamiltonian, and this is how our both the Bogolyubov um, Hamiltonian looks like, and also the many body. Uh, Hamiltonian looks like in, in terms of alpha, and we plot the Eigen values as a function of alpha. So let's let's first get the mini body, the mini body state. For alpha equals zero, that's what we have. We have zero, one point nine, that's right there, right? One point eight two eight, three point eight two eight, five six five six. That's what we I get here. Now, once I, I did that, I can increase alpha and see what, what happens to, to my levels. Now, I have first this crossing here, right? So this state, the first excitation, the first particle starts increasing. The second particle starts decreasing. And the two particle excitations also decrease. Now we have this crossing between the two particle, the, the two one particle energies, 
right? My ground state's still there, parity one. These two states have parity minus one, and they actually cross here. So if I take the spectrum a little bit before two, so let's put it here, two, what do we get? I get uh, that at first my states were at 2.23, 24, and then I, they just cross when I, I go a little bit after two. So um, essentially what, what's happening is that these states in these blocks are crossing, which is expected, right? Since uh, when alpha equals two, these two numbers are gonna be equal. And so, you know, I just have a crossing at party minus one sector. Now, this is not too surprising. It just gets me uh, crossing it in, into excited states. So that's uh, nothing really ex special about that. Uh, if I look at the Bogle above the Gen spectrum, right, it's always symmetric, right? And here I get a crossing in the excited states. And the one single particle states here is like if these two states here are crossing. And of course, there's going to be a mirror crossing for negative energies, but still, the excitation spectrum doesn't uh, doesn't change much. Actually, I have only this one becoming less than that one, but the ground state is still parity one. Now, what happens if I keep increasing alpha? And that's when things get really interesting. For alpha equals seven. I have something really interesting going on, which is the parity equals minus one, eight becoming smaller and smaller until it crosses the ground state. And then from this point on, this minus one parity state becomes the ground state. Now, this is very, very important. When, when this happens, it means that it's more favorable for me to have as the ground state a single particle excitation, right? And so if I go one excitation above that, that will, and from then on, one excitation above that is going to be a two particle excitation or zero particle excitation, maybe maybe it's, it's more favorable for me to remove that particle. So it's a zero particle excitation. Either way is a parity plus one uh, excited state. Now, what, what does that mean at, right at this, at this point? It means that I can create an excitation with zero energy, meaning that is as if I, have this excitation here that I would have to pay this energy plus this energy to create, then all of a sudden these two levels become degenerate at precisely zero energy, right? So at this crossing, when I look at them, my Bogolyubov degen spectrum, I have a crossing at zero. At this particular point, there is no cost for me to create a single particle excitation. Right. So if I look at my excitation spectrum at alpha equals seven, these two become degenerate. So I have a double a double degeneracy in my ground state. So that's that's a fermion parity switch in, in the sense that from then on my my the order of the ground state and first excited state stops from being something like with a parity plus one to a parity minus one to being from a parity minus one to a parity plus one. So that explains what they, they say. When a pair of level of single particle levels, I should say, this is single particles, crosses zero energy, the extension energy of the quasi particles, of the Bogolyubov quasi particle changes sign, right? And it becomes favorable to add a Bogolyubov quasi particle or remove it from the from the superconducting system, and it's essentially that. So this is why when, when I have the, the crossing in at zero, not at, away from zero, it doesn't really matter, but at zero, it really, really matters. It means that the ground state in the excitation spectrum changes character. And, and then I have a parity switch in the ground state.
So the, the ground state switches from plus one to minus one or vice versa. So uh, that's, I think it's really important to understand the, the, you know, this dynamic here of how you go from the, the BDG spectrum to the excitation spectrum and vice versa, so that you know what's going on in terms of both excitations and the quasi-particle, uh, the quasi-particle single particle spectrum. Hope it was useful and we'll see you in the next video. See you.